Picking good color combinations for web design isn't necessarily the easiest thing in the world, especially when you want to focus on accessibility and making sure that everybody can read exactly what's going on on your website designs. That's where having some kind of contrast checker to check against accessibility can come in super handy. Plus, I've also got some other uses for this tool and some of the other things you can do with it. It's all totally free and something I would recommend that you do on every design. So what exactly is it? It's called coolers. Now I've talked about coolers many times in the past and lots of different use cases for this. But I've recently been rebuilding one of my websites and on there I want to make sure that my color contrast is right to make sure that it's accessible as much as possible. So the design is relatively simple. I've got one key accent color which is this kind of teal color. So I need to make sure that the buttons that use that teal color have good contrast with the text on top of it. So to start off with, I was using the teal color with white, and to me, it looks fine. However, running through an accessibility check like this with a color contrast, you can see it scores very, very poorly. So what can we do? Well, it's very simple. We've got our background color set up. I need to be using that color, but the color that sits on top of it is totally optional. It doesn't matter. So what we can do is we can click the little color chip and we can start picking colors or we can use the color picker inside you and we can get a real time kind of telltale exactly what's going on and how good or bad our contrast is. So for example, you see as we start to move over into, for example, this red, we get worse and worse and worse and worse. So you can see that gives us a really bad score and just looking at that on screen will probably make your eyes bleed. However, as we sort of go down into the darker shades, you can see as we get closer to black, we're starting to get much, much better. So as we sit on the black line, you can see it's not perfect because the background color has to be this teal color. If we change that color, maybe went lighter to get more contrast, we would improve that and maybe get a 10 out of 10 score. But I think a 9 out of 10 or 9.01 out of 10 is pretty good anyway. Gives us very good. And you'll see if we click on the little color chip here for our background color, if we start to make this lighter, you'll see we start to get a better score. However, like I say, we've got our color set for our background. That's the kind of brand color that we're working with. So we kind of have to use that and get the best combination. And this is exactly the kind of thing you're going to get in a real world scenario. If you've got a company you're working with, they've got brand colors and you have to stick to those brand colors, which generally you're going to have to, you can't start changing the shades and things you're gonna to have to get the best combination that you possibly can. So using something like a contrast checker like this to help you boost that accessibility is incredibly useful. So that's just one use and one tool that we have inside Coolers. This isn't sponsored, this is just a tool that I think is great. And if you want to get rid of the, the sort of the logos and the banners and the adverts and stuff, you can do that. It's like £2.50 per month if you wanna support them and you start to use them. Again, no affiliation to this whatsoever. I just think it's a cool service. But if we come out to the tools section, we're currently looking at the contrast checker. However, there are four other super useful little tools. If you suck at color combinations, then you can use the palette generator. Now I've covered this many times in the past. Like I say, I think this is an absolutely awesome tool. So we know now that we've got that one brand color that I'm working with. So let's change this centralized color, drop in the brand color that I've got, which is my teal color. And when we're at it, let's lock this so we can't change it. So now that our color's in there, we've got a lot of options we can use. So when we hover over any of these, you'll see we get a series of little icons. We can remove it. We can check the contrast, we can view the shades, we can save this, we can drag this around so if you want to be the first color in our palette, the last, third, whatever you want, you can do that. You can copy the hex value and as we've seen, you can lock it in place. Now if we press the space bar, we now start to get colors that are going to work complementary to that color. Press again, you get different shades. Press again, you get different ones. So you can see this is going through and getting those color combinations for us. You can also view the shades of your color. So you can click and we get our lighter shades and our darker shades. So if you're transitioning over to something like a CSS framework that doesn't have a built-in function, you could use this in this way. It's pretty simple and straightforward. It even shows you which is the kind of root color, which is our first kind of primary color space here. Now, when we're using coolers, we are limited with the free plan. This is kind of kind of generate these for us, kind of 
automatically using any of the sort of color reference modes like analogous and complementary and things like that. However, if you want to get access to those, you can click on the more, the generate method. And like I say, you've got the other options which you do have to pay for, which is a bit of a shame, but you can kind of understand. And for the additional great options you have here, I don't think it's too much of a problem. And if you need it, you can pay like 250 for the one month and then cancel it afterwards if you really need those kind of options. Plus, there are other options out there that will do that for free. So you can start off here and if you want to use other tools. You can also do things like create a palette from a photo, which I think is pretty cool. You can create a palette from a URL, stock images, upload your own photo and so on. So if you've got brand colors or brand logo and you want to grab the colors and then kind of get complimentary colors from it, you could upload it, create the palette. You kind of get the idea. If you want to check what these colors are going to be like for anybody with any kind of color blindness, you can do that. Click the little color blindness option and choose the kind of color blindness that they might be suffering from, like tritonopia. And you can see this is what they would actually see based upon the particular color blindness they have, which is pretty cool because, like I say, it allows you to see what anybody with any kind of visibility issue could see and make sure that it still looks good inside the actual design that you're creating. So pretty cool you can do that. You can also come in to the options to adjust the palette. So you can do things like, well, there's our main palette. Let's see what this would look like with less saturation. So you can drop the saturation down and you can see we now start to see what those exact same colors would look like when they're darker. And alternatively, you can go up to lighter shades if you want to. You can see not a huge difference here, but there is a difference. You can also adjust the temperature if you want to make things warmer, you want to make things cooler, and you can see Everything adjusts in real time. It's very snappy and really nice. And again, you can also shift the hue on these. So if you want to have just a little play about, you like this kind of combination, think, what would it look like if my base color was blah, blah, blah? You can tweak this based upon these options. And then you can click Apply and apply it to the main kind of palette. There's a lot of options inside you, and you can also view this. And you can see there's all our colors. A nice little color strip giving us the RGB, hex, HSB, and so on. Some of those options are pro. You kind of get the idea, though. And there's also additional options inside you, again, for checking your contrast, color info, and so on. Now, let's move on to one of the other tools. Now we can see Explore Palettes. So if you absolutely suck at creating palettes, well, there's a bunch of trending color palettes you can absolutely get access to directly from here. So if you like any of these, you can grab the hex color for any of these. You can click the three little dots. You can open that color palette. You can open it in a generator. You can quick view it. You can full screen it and so on. So there's some nice little options here to allow you to very easily see what it would look like based upon, you know, different color palettes that you can choose from. Open the palette. There's your color palette. You kind of get the idea. And there's similar palettes underneath. So it's nice for inspiration if you want it. I also like you've got the image picker which allows you to grab colors from any kind of image you want to upload. And you can see you can adjust this and you can randomize it, or you can go in and specifically target a particular color inside an image that you like, and then you can export that palette. And if you're a Photoshop user, you can also export this as a Photoshop file, I believe. Come into your tools, let's go into that palette visualizer, and this is pretty nifty. Let's say you want to see what these color palettes are going to look like in various different designs, print, web design, and so on, logos and things. Well, the palette visualizer will allow you to do just that. You can see we can visualize it inside a mobile stroke web UI, click to expand it, and then we can make changes. Let's say we want to remove a color. You can remove colors. You can lock colors inside you. So you can say we want to remove a color, get rid of that blue. Now we have a kind of more monotone, kind of triadic kind of colors palette. You get the idea. You can still hit the space and get it to generate palettes. You can add additional colors in. So if you want to add some in, you can add in, and then you can hit the space, and you can get it to regenerate based upon the color palette, blocking down that kind of pinkish red hue in the middle. And we can unlock it if we want to to get a kind of complete change of colors. There's also options here to upload an SVG file. You can shuffle the colors if you want to. So keep the same color palette, but it shuffles them around inside the design. And you also got the same adjustment for the hues, the saturation, brightness, and so on. You get the idea. And you can undo and you can generate palettes from here. And you can see we do have those options for the different kinds of color modes. So complementary colors, for example, you can generate. You can open this up and say you want to have tetradic, generate. You want to have monochromatic, generate. So it's all working inside the one monotone color palette. You get the idea how this works. And again, if you want to come in and adjust things, you could say, well, let's adjust the saturation to make it a little less in your face. Make it a little lighter, for example. 
Maybe make it a bit warmer. And now you've suddenly changed your color palette over and you've customized and tweaked things. So once you've done that, you can browse or you can export. All those options are here for you. And you can close this down and you can say, well, what would this look like with typography? Well, there's your typography. We're looking with illustration. We're looking at all designs. And there you go. And you can maximize any of these and get a good idea of what it would look like. Particularly awful in this example, but you get the idea of how it would work. So if you don't use coolers, I would 100% recommend you check it out and have a little play around, especially if you suffer with an inability to find good color parts. At least this gives you a good starting point, and then you can check them out, tweak them should you need to. So I would 100% recommend you have a play around with coolers. Check out some of the options that I've shown you in this video. Drop a comment down below and let me know what you think. All applicable links are in the description down below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.